Hi everyone, today I'm going to be having a go at this um, postcard. This is from a lovely book, um, I'm not going to try and say it, it's uh, Johanna Basford's Postcards from World of Flowers. I haven't found a UK version of it, um, so I bought this lovely German version. I did get it off um, Amazon UK though, and they are still available. I'll put a link in the description so you can have a look if you want to. Um, I'm going to be colouring them in my um, Stedler Ergosoft pencils. And uh, I may not get a chance to do all of them, but uh, I'm going to have a little go. I'm going to start with the soil and the pots. So I'm going to keep it zoomed out for a minute because I'll be sort of dotting about from, from plant to plant. And then, uh, and then I might zoom in when I do the details of the different plants. Now for soil, I always do a bit of a mix of browns and greys. So I'm going to start with this number 77, which is the darkest brown I have. And what I do is I do little circles to, uh, and I don't mind if there's bits of white showing, because I feel that when I look at soil, it's never a sort of one regular colour. So, which is why I do a mix of colours for my soil. I think it looks a little bit more realistic. I mean, we're not going for a photorealistic um, effect. But because this pencil is really sharp, I'm holding it on its side so that I don't get too much colour on the page. I just want it to be a sort of gentle layer. So I'm just going in all these gaps. I do find it easier um, with some things to do whoops, a bit of background first, um, which this effectively is, because you know, I nearly coloured in that bit. When I get to concentrate on the main part, i.e. the plant, I sometimes get a little bit muddled as to what's plant and what's background. So if I can just get this soil done, then it'll help me to uh, see what's what. But also, it helps me pick the colour for what I'm doing, because I wouldn't then want to do this plant in this brown colour, because obviously um, obviously that wouldn't work, it would disappear into the page. So I'm going to do exactly the same on this page. We've got a bit, lot more soil on this one. And we've got these which look like they might be supposed to be gravel or stones. You can see I'm just colouring over them at the moment, but I might sort of highlight them out in a bit. But at the moment I just want the soil all done. And it's all going to be the same through the whole page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and just complete this layer of brown or else you're going to get very bored. Okay, so these are all done now with one layer of number 77 in a sort of scribbly motion. And now I'm going to pick my dark grey, which is my number 8 and do a similar thing. So I'm just going to make a start. I won't film this all as well because it, it will get dull. But I just wanted to say that if you don't have the Ergosoft, really any grey or brown combination will work. And also um, you could um, do maybe blacks, maybe sort of almost orangey colours. It all depends on what colour soil you want. Or you could do it to look like um, bark chippings or gravel, things like that. You know, it doesn't have to be soil. Um, I also was going to say that although I'm doing all of them the same colour, you don't have to do that. Not all soil is the same colour, so you could change those colours if you wanted to. I just felt that I wanted to have some these to sort of match. So I'm actually going to do the pots the same colours as each other as well so that they all sort of match. But I have seen this page in the main book. In fact I may have done it, copied that idea with sort of rainbow colours so the different pots and plants say this one might be red and now orange and yellow so the pot and the plant are the sort of one colour. So that's another way of doing it. I don't know what I did for the soil though whether you would tone that in or whether you would do something different. So there are all sorts of different ways of doing this page, but uh, this is just the idea I've had. Now I'm using the Stedler because this postcard is actually going to go to Stedler. Um, 
my husband um, got in touch with them and they were very helpful and he wanted to send them a little thank you so he asked me if I could colour a postcard as a thank you which obviously is what I'm doing now and um, it's quite interesting because they're in Germany and this is a German postcard I think that's quite fitting and also um, I'm using the Stedler pencils because you know of course you have to so that's quite fun I don't know if they'll notice you know the lovely lady that helped him out um, may have not used the pencils just because she works for them in their sort of customer services but anyway I shall get this done for him today and then he can write it but with these postcards they are a little bit thin they're not really sturdy and of course they're not shiny so like a sort of shop bought postcard would be that might have a photograph on so what I will do is we'll put it in an envelope um, rather than um, you know rather than just posting it as it is and uh, he's going to have to take it to the post office as well to get it weighed and stamped so uh, or maybe he'll get me to do that but uh, we'll see so that's that one now uh, this one so this is rather, I find it really relaxing, I'm not having to pick colours, I'm barely having to think, I'm using the same colouring action. Yes, it could get dull, but because this is just a little postcard and all these little shapes that I'm filling in are all different, I just find it really lovely to just colour away and, you know, not really have to think. It's like um, if I'm really tired and I need to chill and I'm doing some colouring, I just do flat colouring as someone called it the other day, where I don't shade or blend or anything, I just grab a colour and I push it onto the page, you know, fill the gaps. Why not? You know, and uh, it might not be a picture that I would show to people or, you know, give away frame or anything, but it just really helps with the old um, stress levels. So you have to have a think you know about your mood and things like that if you're not up for doing anything too intricate or too um, fancy or difficult then doing something that's just easy for you can really be helpful for the old stress we're nearly there now last time I turned the camera off I thought I would do that this time but I've witted on long enough to uh, fill in the time so we have to think about colouring each one of these little plants as well as the um, pots they're in now I'm going to do the pots not just in one colour I mean each pot is going to be the same as the other in the same set of colours but I'm going to do um, I, haven't, I think I'm going to do them in reds and oranges and I will sort of make them I won't just do one color I'll shade them a little bit just to make them look a bit more interesting and I've decided that with these little stone shapes I'm going to ignore them because they're not consistent across all the pots I'm just going to leave them there I'm not going to color them in harder or add any shadow or shade around them now I'm just going to stop and check that I've covered all of the and I think I have. Now if you wanted more texture you could do harder areas, circles and dots and things. I'm just going to leave that there and I may change my mind and go in with a bit more texture on that later but I probably won't knowing me. So I'm going to grab my red. Now the red in the Ergosoft is number 29. Now if you've only got the 24 set you don't have this red so you can go for your darkest orange which is number two. We'll be using number two in a minute but I'm going to show you. Again I'm zoomed out because um, I'm going to be going from pot to pot. So I'm going to do a hard bit of red here and start to fade it out there and the same here. So I'm pressing harder and doing more layers here. I'm releasing my pressure. Now I've re realised it's quite tricky to learn how to do this. If you are struggling just keep practising because it just takes a bit of time to learn. Also you could rather than 
um, going hard and then getting gentler which can be difficult start with gentle layers and then build them up so if I just started with a light layer like that and then got harder and harder it might be a little bit easier because sometimes once you start pressing hard it's quite difficult to stop so I hope you can see what I'm doing on each of the little marked out sections I'm doing a, a darker edge and then lighter towards the middle and we're going to add another colour in as I'm sure you've guessed to, uh, to fill in the rest depending on the size of the section I don't know where my voice went then for a minute. It's gone a bit, uh, gone a bit gruff. I have got a cup of tea. I probably need a bit of that in a minute. So I'm going to do the same all the way around on this one. And then some of the pots don't have a broken up section on them. This one does, so it'll be done in the same way. I'm just going to. I'll show you what I'm going to do with one of the ones that doesn't have this sort of broken up edge and then I'll pause the video and, and fill in the rest so that it doesn't get too dull. So this one is is solid so what I'm going to do is pick a bit here to go in hard you can see really hard and then lighten it around do the same going around here just lighten it and here so what I'm going to do now is pause the video and do this same with this one as this and this and this and do that one like that one okay Right, I've done that now, you can see, I've just filled in those details. Now I'm going to choose, I'm not going to use the number 2 orange, which is the next colour down in the um, box. That's one you may have used. If you, I'm going to use the 24, which is leaves one behind. I just want to jump a little bit to make sure it looks really orange. So if you've used a different orange, then maybe take a few steps through your colours. And then I'm just going to blend that into this one and fade it out towards there sorry I hope you can see and fade it up there and the same down here so go over this bit where we faded it down and then fade it there And with this one, similarly, start fading it towards the middle of each of these smaller pieces. Right, I'm going to pause again and just do this on all of them. Right, I've done all these bits and I've picked my last colour which is number 42. Again I've missed one in my tin so this is a bit of a jump of colour and I'm just going to fill in all these little gaps and what that does I feel, I'm going to go probably over most of it, it just makes it look a little bit more interesting than just doing it the same colour all the way round. Sorry you can't see that. So uh, that's why I decided to do it this way and I think it can look like this bit here is a bit lighter as if there's sort of, it's slightly shiny. Sometimes it can give that impression. I'm not leaving a white gap at all. If you leave a white gap it can look more metallic and shiny. But I don't want, I want it to look more like it's sort of china made of, you know, ceramic or something like that. But I also like this orange colour, really warms everything up. It's sort of yellowy, 
which I like. So with this one I can cheat and I can just go over the whole thing. I don't have to do each little section one at a time. So it's quite quick. Whoops, especially when you go out the line. Never mind. I shall tidy it up at the end before I uh, before my husband sends it off. Now I've been thinking about all of these succulents and what colours to do them. So uh, we shall have a go with those. This last layer is really simple, as you can see. Not doing anything special, just covering in those gaps. There we go. So that's those done. Now I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to bring it in and zoom you in a little bit more. There we go. Now, first with this one, I'm going to grab this blue. It's not going to be blue, it's going to be green. But I'm going to shade in in these gaps here where I think there should be a bit of shadow with this blue to start with and then I'm going to cover it all over with the green in a bit um, down here maybe in here see all these little bits where the leaves overlap where there would be shadow a bit in the middle Now I'm not going to take much notice of the dots and lines on the leaves. I'm just going to colour each leaf. A bit more in there I think. I'm going to go under this one. Um, you could do, um, you know, do maybe this bit different colour to these bits but I'm not going to do that. There. I might just do a little bit there. Here, maybe around there. Oh, and here. Let's see, yep, that's done. I'm going to grab my green. I'm going to use the number five. And what I'm going to do is, as I go over the top of this bit, I'm going to press quite hard. And then I'm going to get lighter as I get towards the end of the leaf and really fade it down so there's barely any colour. And as you can see, it no longer looks blue. Well, it may do in the camera, but it doesn't to me. Also, of course, I have this <laughs> conversation all the time with people about, well, with my dad particularly, about, oh, look, that bit there, I feel needs a bit of blue in there. With um, about blue and green and which is which. Sometimes he says something's blue and I say it's green. But uh, he was saying that to me the other day. I was on Skype chatting to him and I was colouring. And he, I was using a Polychromos Cobalt Green and he was saying, oh, that's a nice blue. But of course, when you're on camera, the colours don't always show true anyway. But it was quite amusing. He said, do you, have, do you have conversations with your husband about arguments about colour? Because he has this theory that men and women see them differently. He might be right, I don't know. But uh, my husband has is partially colour blind. So uh, we don't really um, have discussions about colour because uh, uh, we know we see things differently. So moving round... So I hope you can see that I'm just pressing a bit harder here and then just trying to get a bit lighter towards the end. Now I know um, it isn't easy to learn how to do this, just keep trying and practicing and um, it will come. To remember that I've been colouring a long time, since probably 2014 or something. And Almost as soon as I started colouring, I coloured every single day. 
so I do a lot. So I've been practicing for a long time. And even now, you know, I still feel like I'm quite basic in my techniques. Some people are just wow me. They're amazing. But that's okay. I think it's really nice to be inspired by other people, to um, enjoy other people's work, to um, see whether you want to try and do something similar and learn the techniques. But I do think that some people will spend, like on a picture like this one little plant, they might spend days and I I'm not that sort of patient person. I have this sort of personality where I like to get things finished. So, uh, so I don't rush, but I don't labour over it, you know. So, uh, it's. Uh, I think that's why I finished so many copies of Johanna's books because um, I like the feeling of finishing things. Whereas I know some people don't. My husband always sometimes seems afraid to finish things. He's more of a procrastinating type of person. That one's not very evenly coloured, is it? There we go. So uh, it's quite interesting, I think, that we're all different. I think it makes us... It's what makes us us. Put a bit of darker under there. So that's that one. Now we have... Now I'm thinking about colours and... I do, um, right, this one has interesting little dots and blobs on it. And what I think I'm going to do is to colour those in a different colour to the rest. So I'm just trying to grab a brown. I'm going to grab this number 73 and I'm colour all these in just a hard layer of brown. I don't know whether this looks like a real plant and whether if it was whether there's something specific that goes on in these bits or whether they're supposed to be little gaps or what I really don't know. So I'm just playing with it in the way that I think it might look good. You could look up um, succulents and copy some of them. It can be fun. Now I'm aware that this video is getting really long so I'm going to cut a few bits in the I'm going to show you some parts and not all parts of this one for example. So number 57, I'm just going to show you on this one what I'm going to do. So I'm going to harder here and then lighter towards the tip of this part. And the same here. So I'm just going to go around the whole plant doing that, so harder here and lighter towards the tip. So I'm going to pause and do that. Right, so now I have finished that one, you can see how it looks. Now if you want more definition within the plant, you can go darker in some of the areas. I'll just show you, um, maybe grab um, the number five that we use for this one and you could go into here and here and just darken it up a little bit. I'm not going to do that with this one. I'm going to move on to this one. Now again, greens, I think. I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to do number 38 and number, I think this is 10. No, it's 50. 10 is a yellow. So what I'm going to do is do some darker areas around here so where there might be shadow a bit like we've been doing on the others and then around the edges of all these bits 
You see I'm doing quite a thin line. I'm not going to try and blend it away. I want it just to be quite a quite an obvious shadowy area. And all the way round. And it's nice and simple as well. Try and keep it right to the line if you can. There we go. And then we're going to grab this other, this number 50. What I'm going to do is just colour over the top of that and then lighten up towards the edge. So, like that. And then lighter towards the edge. So that'll be the same on all of those, I won't show you at all, but for this one I'm going to go darker around this outside edge and then gently reduce the pressure towards the middle as I spiral round. Try not to leave any white gaps, but just reducing the amount of green that I use. So just repeating the layers on the outside. There we are. And so I'm going to finish this bit off camera. Right, there's that one. And I rather like the fact that it has a sort of three-dimensional effect because of that shading. It looks like these are piled on top of each other, which is fun. Right, now for this one here, now again, I'm going to do a similar sort of three-dimensional type thing on this one because we've got, if we put a shadow in here in between these layers it will look three-dimensional so I'm just finding all the areas where it looks like leaves are overlapping each other and just popping in a dark layer of colour and then I will add a second colour like I did I don't know if I told you I'm using number five I don't know if I told you that but hopefully we'll get a similar effect to the last one. This one's a bit more fiddly, there's more, a lot more um, layers. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss any out. It's sending me a bit cross-eyed as I go through. Um, I'm trying to work out what's going on here. I think we've got one there and one there. It's quite complex there. But we're getting there. Uh, there. I think that's it. I'll notice any as I go through. So I'm going to use my number 52 to fill them in. I'm going to do the same as I did with the other one. So I'll just show you. So taking, colouring over that shadow and then lightening up towards the tip. Like that and lightening towards the tip. So I'm going to pause the video and finish that off. Okay, so that one's done now. And we've got these two left. Now this one I tend to like to do a mixture of different colours and this one I'll do all three the same. So I'm thinking what sort of colours, I'll probably use the colours that we've used already, um, probably not the colours I used for the outside or for the dirt but other colours that I used for various different bits. So basically all the greens I suppose. So I think the sort of thing that I will do with these is um, this is number 38 and just sort of go around the edge 
with quite a hard layer and then gently reduce that pressure towards the middle so that it's lighter in the center and I think I'll do the same with other ones that look similar so this one here which also has a sort of circle in the middle it's quite fun going around in the spiral and this one here this isn't a spiral so it's a little bit more tricky we go and then <clears throat> excuse me pick a different green um, I'll go for number 57 for all of the ones that aren't round and what I'm going to do with these is slightly different is going darker on that sort of flatter side and then have make it go lighter towards the tip gosh it's not very well blended there we go and the same with this one and this one and this one okay that's all of those let's put those to the side now we've got these sort of fluffy dotty ones and I'm going to do the same as I did for this one but I'm not going to go press quite so hard because I want to make sure that it looks like it's a different colour because sometimes these two look a bit similar um, well, so I'm going to do that one even though it's not quite the same. And this one, oh, my nose is tickling. I might have a sneeze in a minute. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know where that came from. Okay. Um. I'm thinking this one as well. Okay, now we've got, I'm going to do all the rest in this number 50, apart from the ones that look like flowers these ones and I'm using the same technique it doesn't show up so much in a lighter colour I'm just doing my best this one needs to be there we go Now the flowery ones, I'm going to do all the same and I'm going to pick, um, I'm going to do the brown colour that we did on the plant above. Um, this one, the number 73 and then it will sort of tie in, see with that one. Now these I'm going to do darker on the middle and lighter towards the outside. I do it quite quickly so I'm pressing harder here and then just reducing the pressure as I go out just keep adding layers until you get the definition that you're looking for Last one. This one's got some green on where I went over the lines. But there we go. It's pretty hidden. Now the last one. Now we've got what looks like flowers on here. But for all of these we've done them green. We haven't done flowers. So I'm not going to do them as flowers. I'm just going to do the, the bits that look like leaves in a different colour to the bit these bits. So I'm going to use my number 38 to do the leaves. And I'm going to do them quite simply. 
So I'm just going to do a harder layer of colour here and fade it towards the edge of the leaf. Nice and simple because there are a lot to do. I'm just going to show you one um, of these and then I shall do the others and pop back on to uh, just do the finishing touches. So that's that, simply done. And then the colour for the middle, what I'm going to do is use my number 52 and define the edges here, like we have with others. I think it will just add some consistency between the different plants if we use a similar method like that. Yeah, sorry, just checking I covered it all. And then use the number 50 to um, finish it off. And hopefully that gives us a slightly three-dimensional look. There we go, I'm just going to pause and finish that off. Okay, I've now completed that one. So I'm going to zoom out so that you can have a look at all of them together. And I rather like the fact that we've got quite a consistent colour palette. We've got the two lots of brown in here, the pots are all the same and they just sort of all match. And so, you know, that's the sort of merits of using a more, oops, a more um, limited colour palette. So that's that. The only other thing you could do if you wanted now is to go around the edge of each plant with a little bit of dark, maybe this dark grey, and make it look like a shadow so it looks more three-dimensional off the soil. I'm not going to do that. I think we've I've talked for far too long as it is and gone on for too long, but I just hope that's given you some ideas for, um, for this one. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, well done you and happy colouring.